what's some of the craziest kind of wildest stuff y'all had to deal with as an organization? Well, usually it's in the schools. Mm. As I said before, the we we sued in Tennessee in Dayton, Tennessee, which is Ray County, which is where the Scopes trial was. Oh, yeah. In 1925, they were teaching Bible classes and the entire county board and the entire school board voted against us. They voted to continue the classes. But our plaintiff was hearing them talking at football games and stuff saying, you know, they're actually right, but I can't vote against this in this town. So that's kind of funny. There was a, a superintendent in um, northern Mississippi of the schools. He got our letter. They were, they were doing prayers over the loudspeakers before Friday night football games. That's a big deal in the South. Yeah. And so they were doing Christian prayer. They were doing actually not just Christian, but like Southern Baptist Christian prayers. Ooh. ooh. You know, and, and they were excluding like other kinds of Christians. And so uh, we sent a letter saying, by the way, this has already gone to the Supreme Court. It's already been decided what your schools are doing are against the law. And to his credit, this principal, uh, this superintendent, sent a memo out to all of the principals saying, we have to stop doing this. It's against the law. And boy, did that cause an uproar. <laughs> and so, and, and you can't, we've been doing this for, for two millennia in our town. We've been doing, having prayers and you can't, some Northern group can't come down here and tell us how to run our local affairs. That's not America. Yeah. Uh, as, as if there wasn't a thing called the constitution. Or right. Bill of rights. So um, then uh, the next Friday night, when they couldn't have the prayer over the loudspeakers, all almost all the people in the stands, all the Christians, they ran down to the 50 yard line in a big group and they loudly screamed out the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which are to show us, right? Oh man. You yeah. Know what I mean? Oh yeah. And, and actually, we don't care about that because that's that's free speech, that's private speech. Mm -hmm. What we care about is government speech. Sure. So when the school is broadcasting it over the loud, official loudspeakers at an official school event, that's the government speaking. We don't sue those people. We sue the government. So if they want to do that, that's fine. How could we possibly interfere with someone's private right? Sometimes we'll, um, oh, a funny story in Tennessee. They had put a Christian cross on top of the water tower. A big one. It's called Whiteville, Tennessee. Whiteville, Tennessee. Yeah, and, and actually, it's, it doesn't sound that bad because the the city council was fully integrated in that, but it still it had that Tennessee feel. Yeah. And so it it turned out that the mayor was we're not taking that cross down. It's been there for a long time. It was put up with private money, even though it was on the city property. Mm. Well, when it, when it became clear that he was going to lose, he had somebody climb up to the top of the water tower and broke off one of the arms of the cross deliberately. And then the mayor said, see, it's not a cross anymore. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Are you for real? <laughs> it's, and I think it's still there. No uh, way. You know, We got photographs of it. So <laughs> if, you, if you go to Whiteville, Tennessee, you'll see this weird shape from one execution symbol to another. It looks like a hang. <laughs> It looks like a hang hang thing, you know, which I don't know how well that plays in Tennessee, having a lynching. Symbol, yeah. But, so actually, that mooted the case. It was no longer a Christian symbol. No way. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. That's the wildest thing. I've never heard. I've heard stories of people, you know, fighting these kinds of cases and stuff and wanting to put like Baphomet statues, you know, th that kind of yeah. stuff. I've never heard of an active defamation from another Christian <laughs> trying to do that. That's wild. Oh well, my. and then and then during the during the complaint, I don't think we actually yeah, we went to court. Yeah, we did go to court at the first round. So all the townspeople, they were gonna show us. They all put these white crosses on their front yards all over the city. And when you drive through Whiteville, you'll see almost every home has these crosses to show us atheists that they love Jesus. Mm. And we're saying, Great, that's your speech. Right. That's you yeah. expressing your views on your property, on your church, on your home. That's wonderful. That's America. We're not going to complain about that. Yeah. But when the city does it, then we complain. Right. Like that's, and, and to someone, again, who's just grown up and lived my life as recent as it is, you know, I, 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 it was hard for me to understand at first, like, oh, why, why aren't people in 
why don't they like this separation of church thing? You know, it makes perfect sense to me in a public school. I don't want to see that. Even when I was a Christian, it made sense to me, you know, like, cause not everybody believes the same way, but when I hear from older people and I hear, Oh, it used to be different, you know, like these are like traditions people are talking about. And so like, it does feel like a personal attack because yeah. these it's like, you know, it's, it's attacking like a community value. At least that's what it feels like to some people, community values, even though a community is going to be made up of probably a lot more diverse people than what the loudest majority might be a part of. Right. And so well, that's what, that's what bothers them mm. is the fact that it is getting more diverse. Yeah. They yeah. are losing this hegemony. They are losing this privilege and power and superiority that they used to have. And it's happening right under their feet, especially happening with your generation, with yeah. young people. About a third of your generation right now does not is not religious. Yeah, and I, I got I want to get to calls here, but like you're right about this because like I did not realize how privileged I was until I left Christianity. Like how many I I can't tell you how many of my friends use fake names on on the internet and and in in real life. Because they're talking about this stuff. I didn't know anybody who was a Christian that was using a fake name because they were afraid somebody was going to find out they were a Christian. Yeah. Okay. Like that's just, you know, like they can't even express themselves the way that they wanted to. And I could have just talked about the Bible or, or Christianity with whoever I wanted, whoever I wanted, where I came from. Like that was not an issue. Yeah. Uh, but didn't but, you think that the Christians were being persecuted? Didn't you think did. the big secular world was attacking our values? The big secular know? world and Hollywood yeah. was trying to influence me to have premarital sex and um, just just lust after the flesh. And take and drugs and yeah. Take drugs and, and mess with the gender roles that God specifically designed for us. Um, yeah. yeah. And now it's like, no, no, no. It's actually the opposite. Literally, mm. <laughs> everybody in government is a Christian and mm. I'm, I'm the minority here. This is, you know, it's not. It's not as fun. It's not as fun. It's more fun when you get to pretend that you're persecuted versus actually, you know, not yeah. saying that I've been persecuted, but like, you know, I, I do have some disadvantages now. Um, well, if you were going to run for a public office in your town, you probably would not want to put atheist on the, on the yard sign. Oh, I'd be screwed because I have this show. Like, that's it. Oh, there you go. Okay. I, my days are done. 